Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ohio Tropics YouTube channel. My name is Rafael Delal. I'm the houseplant warrior author, and I run the blog ohiotropics.com, which is all about plant care. And for any new people viewing my channel, welcome. And I encourage you to subscribe to, to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to rehab this orchid. <laughs> now this, this moth orchid has been a little battered and I actually neglected it. We all do that sometimes, right? It's not that we don't know any better, but I had this one actually sitting outside in another pot and that other pot did not have drainage holes. This one does, of course, that's, that's very important. You know, we had some rainy periods and I kind of forgot to, to empty out the water. And so all of these roots actually have, um, uh, were rotted out. A lot of people, you know, when they see an orchid that's struggling, they ask me, is it dead? Well, is it green? If it's green, it's not dead. But I'm gonna show you how you can revive that orchid that has been beaten and battered. <laughs> such as this one. And this, I'm actually gonna combine several different things in this video. I do have another orchid repotting video on my channel, but this one's gonna be the same, but also a little bit different. Now I do wanna show you, this orchid actually has two flower stalks. There's one here, and then there's one here. This actually grew around and then went kind of curved over and there's another flower stalk, you can see that there. So just because you know an orchid doesn't look its best doesn't mean that it can't bloom. What I'm going to do here is clean this orchid up and get it ready to live its best life. Before actually starting to repot it, what I did was I took some orchid mix. This is Better Grow Phalaenopsis Orchid Mix. There isn't one magic potting medium for your orchids. I do prefer the potting mixes that are bark based. Oftentimes, you know, you buy moth orchids in grocery stores or hardware stores, wherever you want to get them, and they're packed in sphagnum moss. I'm using sphagnum moss is perfectly fine, but I find that when you purchase orchids in sphagnum moss, they're packed way too tightly and it's, it's, it doesn't allow enough air to the root system. So that's why I don't, I tend not to prefer um, sphagnum moss because in, in those cases, I always have to end up repotting them. Of course, it all depends on your growing environment, but I do prefer, this is a really great mix. I will have a link to this in my description of the video. For any bark-based potting mixes, I like to soak them in water, hot water, for at least an hour. If you could do it overnight, it's even better because bark mix can be extremely dry just out of the bag. So this has been soaking in hot water, and the hot water will really help to hydrate a little bit better. You can use straight orchid bark with nothing else in it, but depending on the potting medium, it affects how frequently you end up watering. And with bark mix already being pretty porous, it'll require you know, fairly frequent watering. Um, I like this bark mix because it has not only the bark chunks, but it also has chunks of charcoal, which will help keep the potting mix fresh. It has large pieces of perlite, and this also includes some peat moss as well in order to hold a little bit more moisture. It's not gonna struggle for air, it's a very chunky potting mix, so that's not gonna be the problem. Another thing that you can do, if you just have plain, you don't have to get this, um, if you just have plain orchid bark, you can mix in a little bit of sphagnum moss, and I would say maybe two parts of bark to one part of sphagnum moss, and it'll help keep the, bar, the potting mix a little bit more hydrated versus just using the straight bark mix, but anyway, I highly recommend soaking your bark mix overnight or at least an hour before you use it. So let's get on with the repotting and the cleaning up of this poor little orchid. Okay, so like I mentioned, this has been sitting in water, unfortunately, outside. Now, I also notice a very foul odor. I mean, that's just from the roots rotting. Orchid roots like a lot of air. They like to breathe. These are epiphytes. They grow on trees in nature. So they actually use their roots to attach onto tree branches and the roots are, for the most part, fully exposed to the air. So they need a lot of air circulation. They cannot sit in water for extended periods of time. Now, thankfully this orchid didn't die, 
So, but you can see here at the bottom, watch what happens here. See how this pulls, all this pulls off. This is the actual orchid root. This is, this is just a covering. You can tell that your roots have rotted when you, when you have this. Okay, when they pull right off and you just see the string left. These roots have rotted. Actually, I was gonna snip them off, but, well, this one I may snip off. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna snip all these off so I can take this orchid out of the pot. Okay, it looks like that's, that's about done. I'm going to be very careful because I do have two flower stalks that I don't want to break off. Now, this is an old flower stalk and it has completely dried up. Okay, so this one I can safely cut off. So I'm just going to take my pruners. Now, when you use pruning shears, I would recommend wiping them down with isopropyl alcohol to sterilize them so you're not spreading disease. And snip it, maybe. I'm going to need my other heavy-duty pruners. Let me go get them. All right, we're gonna use these guys. Okay, it's, oh, it just flew right over to my pencil cactus. Now I'm gonna to proceed to take the orchid out of the pot and actually it came out nice and easy. It doesn't smell too bad. It did before when it was sitting in water, let me tell you that. The next thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm going to remove all of the old potting mix. So I'm gonna go, this was in a, this is approximately probably a four or four and a half inch diameter pot. And I'm gonna repot it in this six inch diameter pot. I like these clean, uh, clear orchid pots because you can see the health of the root system by using these. And actually orchid roots actually photosynthesize as well. Mostly the photosynthesis is going to occur from the foliage, but they also photosynthesize with the roots. And so by having a clear pot, it lets a little bit more light in. All right, so now I'm going to simply very gently kind of jiggle the roots to get all the old potting mix out. And I can see actually there are, oh, I found this amethyst in here. You know what I did with these? Um, this was actually my spouse's grandmother's plant. And I have quite a few houseplants from dead people, <laughs> including my own grandmother as well. And I put an amethyst in each of those plants so I can remember. This one actually is a very beautiful um, orchid that has white flowers with a lot of little red spots on them. Um, I'm going to reserve this because I'm going to put it back. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. You just want to lightly jiggle everything. And there are, there are more rotted roots here. Some leaves. <laughs> From the outdoors, I'm gonna take those out. So quite a few roots that are still good. These are nice and plump. They could be a little healthier. Um, actually, you can see some are actually a little dehydrated. You can see they're wrinkly, but they're still firm. So they're salvageable. Now, this, this one's dead, like I, like I showed you. If it just reduces itself to a string, that is actually rotted out. So I'm gonna pull all those off gently if they don't want to come off easily, I will trim them off. Okay, I wanted to point this one out. So this is nice and plump here. Here. This one is completely shriveled. And I think what happened was it got damaged here and it broke. So I'm going to just snip it right there. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my potting mix to my new pot. Now little by little, I'm going to add my bark mix. And you don't want any large pockets that don't have any bark mix. So use your fingers or you can use a thin little bamboo stake as well. But I just like to use my fingers. I like to feel what I'm working with. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate and then just keep doing that until I go all the way around. If you break a root or two, it's okay. And then if you're worried about, you know, a lot of people have asked me, well, what about, you know, these roots that are on the outside of the pot that are not growing in the potting mix? That's okay. And that's actually perfectly natural 
for them to grow that way because, again, these are epiphytes that grow on trees and they have exposed roots. So it's perfectly natural for them to grow that way. So I would encourage you to, um, for as many, as many of the orchid roots that you can, to have under the bark mix. That's great because it will stay hydrated better that way. But it is okay to leave some roots exposed. That's just how they grow. It's perfectly fine. And I, I actually have quite a few here. I'm almost done. You can see there's quite a few roots that are exposed. Now, what you want to do with those exposed roots, oh, I have all this, all this goodness here. Um, what you want to do with those exposed roots while I'm finishing the repotting job here is when you're watering them, when you're watering your orchid, you want to water the exposed roots as well. Now, whether, you know, whatever method you're using to water, whether you're just streaming water straight through or you're actually soaking the plant in water, which I recommend if you do it half an hour to an hour um, of that, then take it out, let everything drain. That's great as well. It depends on how dehydrated the bark mix is. What I like to do is for any exposed roots, I like to mist them fairly frequently. If you can do a daily, that's wonderful because what will happen is if you don't over time, especially indoors with dry air, especially in the winter time, the roots will shrivel up and die, um, the exposed ones, I should say, if you don't provide enough, enough moisture. Another reason that I like these plastic pots is that I'll be able to tell by looking at it what kind of a job I did in repotting. So I can see I have a pretty uniform distribution of the potting mix, mix throughout the pot, and it looks, it looks pretty good to me. Let's talk a little bit about when to repot. Normally, I like to tell people, well, wait until after their major bloom period has occurred. However, in this case, it was kind of an emergency, so I would say repot when you need to. A lot of the roots were rotted out. I, I wanted to, you know, quickly put it in better conditions. Um, even though it is, you know, blooming, it should be fine. Don't overthink it. If a, if a plant needs to be repotted, just go ahead and do it. And then aim to have as, as good growing conditions as you can. Here's a little bonus information. Typically, depending on the parentage of your plants, typically moth orchids or phalaenopsis will grow a bloom spike around this time of year. It depends on where you live and what your conditions are. But in fall to winter, a lot of times these plants will set out um, new flower spikes. If your plant hasn't grown a new, a new flower spike, let's say by early winter or so, what you can do to encourage blooming is you can place your orchid in cooler conditions with reduced nighttime temperatures, even in the 50s Fahrenheit or so, for a period of a few weeks. And oftentimes that'll be enough to trigger blooming. Now granted, you still have to have enough light for your orchid in order, to, in order for it to bloom. Indoors, inside the house, I would recommend an eastern facing window is beautiful. So gentler morning sun is wonderful for these plants, especially in the winter time when the sun is less intense. So at this time, I'm just gonna give my orchid a, a good watering and set it in its spot and it is good to go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with anybody that has a dying orchid and are looking to revive it. I'm sure it'll provide some helpful tips for them I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.